Should you convert your Sportster from a belt drive to a chain and sprocket system? We'll take a look at the pros and cons and find out which setup is right for you. So I had a video request from Minister Moto Vlogs. So make sure you go check him out. Check out his channel. He's got some great cinematic content. And, and he was curious as to why a lot of guys are changing over to a chain drive system from their belt drive system on their Sportsters. Well, let's take a look at both of them and kind of figure out what might be the right setup for you. So belt drive systems, which come stock on your Sportster, these are low maintenance, high mileage systems. If you keep them clean, if you take care of them, if they don't end up damaged, like say you don't pick up a rock or something and you run it through the sprockets and it doesn't chew up the belt and ding up the sprockets, these belts can last anywhere from 60 to 100,000 miles. And really the only thing that you have to do to a belt drive system is just make sure you keep it properly tensioned, make sure it's running straight, and pretty much that's it. There's no lubrication involved in these. You don't have to clean, I mean, you do have to clean them. I mean, you don't have to, you should. You should go ahead and clean them up real good, make sure they're clean, inspect them often, and just stay on top of them. And if you do that, they're gonna last a long, long time. Now, there is some downsides to the belt as with any drive system. They do tend to lose a little more horsepower between the transmission and the rear wheel. They lose that horsepower about the tune of 10 to 15 percent loss and that's quite a bit compared to a chain but the trade-off is long life and low maintenance for the belt drive system now they're not as strong as the chain so if you're going with a really high horsepower build if you're doing any kind of like wheelies or stunt riding with your sportster uh, you might want to lean towards a chain because you know eh, belts they'll do it but for how long and it's such an important part of the motorcycle. I mean, you lose the belt, you shred it, you're dead in the water, you're done, you gotta call a tow truck. There is no way to rig that to get home. At least none that I would really wanna see or feel safe riding myself. And the other good thing is with a belt too, and with a belt, if a belt were to break at high speed or something, uh, less likely it's gonna tear you up as bad. Hopefully it'll just chuck out and go right out the back end and not lock the rear wheel up. Also, belts compared to the chain, the belt runs a lot smoother and a lot quieter than the chain. Now, this Harley is my first motorcycle I've ever owned that actually had a belt drive on it. So the chain, I never really noticed the noise. It never really bothered me. And I never really noticed the difference. Now, belts can be quite expensive to replace especially if you end up replacing your pulleys along with your belt. They can be quite costly, but you have to think about the longevity that you're getting out of them at the same time. And honestly, when it came to changing a belt out, you know, say I had 60 to 100,000 miles on my bike somewhere in that range and I was gonna change the belt, I don't necessarily know if I'd really change the pulleys out with it or not, unless they were just heavily worn, but you know, you wouldn't think a, a belt would wear down pulleys that bad. But I don't know, I haven't crossed that bridge yet. But a little later on in the video, we'll take a look at the cost of what it would be to replace your belt and to replace your pulleys. So now that we've got the belt out of the way, please don't forget to go ahead, like the video, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Now let's talk about the chain drive conversion and why you might want to ditch the factory belt in favor of going with a chain drive conversion. Number one, if you're doing any kind of stunt riding, you're doing wheelies, or you're drag racing, or you're building a very extremely high output motor, that would definitely call for a chain drive. The obvious is the chain is stronger than the belt drive. The belt drive can seriously be a weak link when compared to a chain. Now, chain drives do not last as long, depending on how you ride, what you're doing with it, and also the materials you use. You could probably expect to get 15,000 miles, maybe more, maybe less, out of a chain drive. And that is also dependent on what kind of sprockets you use. If you're going with steel sprockets or aluminum sprockets, 
obviously the steel, the steel sprockets are gonna last a little longer than the aluminum. And also depending on the quality of chain you, you're using as well. Now the chain drive is gonna require more maintenance than the belt. You're not gonna be able to just kind of forget about it. You gotta check them often, you gotta clean them more often, and you're gonna have to adjust them more often as well. Now the chain, like I said earlier, it is a little noisier than the belt drive, but that's not really a big issue, honestly. I mean, for me anyhow, some guys might find it as an issue. It's not like you're gonna be able to hear it over your pipes anyhow. But the chain, it also, it puts more power to the ground. There's less loss between the transmission and the rear wheel, only about probably one to 4%. So you're getting more power to the ground with the chain. And like I said, if you're drag racing or if you're doing any stunts, uh, re-gearing is gonna be a lot easier and a lot cheaper because you're gonna have so many more different options for sprockets out there, especially front and rear. And you can go up however many teeth you want. You can go down however many teeth you want. Maybe you're somebody that still rides on the street, but you go out and do some parking lot stunning or you do a little racing. You'd be able to re-gear your motorcycle for whatever you're wanting to do that day. If you're gonna run some highways, you could drop some teeth down on the back, or if you're gonna go out and do some wheelies, you could go ahead and put a bigger one on the back, go up several teeth. It's a lot quicker and easier to buy those and a lot cheaper as well than it is to purchase a pulley. And we're gonna look at that here in a little bit. Chain and sprockets, they don't last as long, but they're a lot more cost effective to replace when compared to the belt and the pulley system. Let's go take a look at what it would cost to actually replace your belt and your pulleys. Okay. So just for reference, I'm gonna use a factory microfish here. This will kind of give you an idea of what the cost of a belt and pulleys for your sportster would be, should you have to go to replace them. Now, of course you can get these cheaper on the aftermarket, but for reference, we're gonna use the OEM parts here. Now, number 16, the rear sprocket here. To replace this guy, it's gonna run you $190, $190.49, just for the rear sprocket. Now, number 17 being the front sprocket, $57.99. This is if you went down to your local dealer and you ordered this guy. Now, just a belt itself, $193.49. That's just for the belt, that's the OEM belt. And if you were to buy all these parts together without tax, or labor included, if you weren't doing it yourself, we're looking at $441.97. Now, for me personally, I would probably go with the OEM Harley-Davidson belt unless I could find a good, high-quality aftermarket belt that was significantly cheaper. That would be the only way I'd probably get away from OEM, especially on a part that is this critical on the motorcycle. I wouldn't go buy the eBay or Amazon special on this part. I wouldn't skimp on it. God, so the belt's not cheap at all. Just the belt itself's $193, but for $447, if you were replacing the whole system, and I'm glad you don't have to do that between 60 and 100,000 miles. Let's take a look at the chain drive conversion kit and kind of get an idea. Let's get a ballpark on what that would run you to convert it over. And of course, you know, just replacing the chain and sprockets would probably be a little less. But let's go take a look at that right now. Okay, so here we have some examples of a chain drive conversion kit for the Sportster. Now, of course, they're going to vary by years, but this will kind of give you an idea of the price range. Looks like we're, they start out, you know, with a chain right at about 200 bucks. A couple of them down here that actually don't have a chain with them that are a little more expensive. But if you're gonna do this, I would highly recommend buying the best one that you could find. I mean, this is a critical part. You want it to fit right, and you don't want that chain to break on you. So if you guys, if any of you guys have done the chain drive conversion, let me know in the comments. Let me know what brand of sprockets and chain you guys went with. Some of these, I mean, we're looking at about 150 bucks. So it's critical to get a good part. Absolutely critical to get a good part when it comes to this. Because this is such an important part of your motorcycle, you do not want this thing to snap on you. If I were you, I'd probably stay away from the Amazon or eBay specials when it comes to the chain drive kit. So the chain drive is significantly cheaper than the belt, but it is gonna require more maintenance and it is gonna require you to replace it more often than it would be on the belt. Now, there aren't any indexing marks for alignment on the Sportster swing arms. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to rely on either measuring it out yourself 
from a fixed point on the motorcycle to the axle, or there are a couple of tools out there that are really helpful for making sure you have your belt straight or your chain straight. Now for the belt, a belt tension gauge. These things are great. A lot of guys can tension them by feel. I can kind of tension them by feel, but I always check it just to make sure that it's correct. Because with the belt, tension is very, very important. And if you're running the factory belt, one of the main, one of the best places to reference the information on the factory belt is right here in the owner's manual. You will find everything you need right here on how to properly tension and maintain your belt. Now, for chain drives, since they don't have indexing marks and it is critical for proper alignment on a belt or a chain, Motion Pro has some tools that work really, really well. Now, you don't necessarily have to buy this tool right here. I just picked one up from Motion Pro. It's nothing but a little piece of wire with a little indicator on it. I measure, I still, I use this to check, make sure my wheel alignment's correct when I'm adjusting my belt. But I also still, I check it with this. I measure it with a tape measure just to make sure everything's spot on. Cause like I say, there's no indexing marks on these bikes to tell you where your alignment's at. And you could also use this for if you're adjusting the chain or if you're adjusting the belt. And also, if you do convert to a chain drive, Motion Pro has a tool that will help you get your chain lined up. I actually don't have that because I don't have a bike with a chain, but I'll throw a picture of that guy up right here. So guys, if you're just casually riding your Harley Sportster, you're not doing any stunts, wheelies, or drag racing, maybe the belt's just fine for you. Maybe the belt's all you need. Low maintenance, longevity, you're not building a monster motor, you're just running down the road, I'd stick with the belt. But unless you just like the look of a chain drive system, and you're, maybe you like the way they run down the road better, or you're building a high horsepower build, or you're drag racing, that might be the way to go for you. But just keep in mind that it's gonna require some more maintenance on your part, and you're gonna have to change it out more often. But as with anything, just make sure you stay on top of your drive systems and stay safe out there on the streets. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Very important, give it the thumbs up. We wanna get this information out to as many people that are looking for it. Well, I appreciate you guys watching and stay safe out there. Hopefully this virus thing is gonna go away soon so we can all get back out to our bike nights and our meetups. But anyhow, guys, be safe on the streets. I'll catch you guys next week. Thank you for watching.